Assalamu alaikum everybody Peace be upon you all Thank you for watching this podcast And thank you for joining in Today I have my uncle Who I refer, refer as Chach And he is known as The Running Man Which is He's, he's a A uh, a celebrity within the UK, uh, moreover in all Bengali uh, communities, he's received a medal of honor. I think, or what was it? <laughs> British Empire medal. British Empire medal, right? Uh, so he's definitely contributed. He needs no introduction. Trust me, he needs no introduction. If you know him, you know him. Yeah, uh, Chach. How you doing? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all. Uh, but is uh, alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair for the invite. Uh, it's, I'm so happy to see that you are uh, looking well. Your health is, alhamdulillah, from what it was to what it is now. Alhamdulillah. May Allah grant you even better health, inshallah, Amen. and keep you among us and uh, continue your amazing work that you're doing. Uh, and uh, this uh, podcast you're doing, mashallah, you know, may Allah accept it and may Allah make this a means I mean, I mean. for us, uh, inshallah. inshallah. Mashallah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. All by God's grace. Mm. Um, just to remind you yeah, uh, that this is not an Islamic channel, it is for, for, for the public. So okay. let us keep our uh, terminology use very. Uh, okay, okay. Um, uh, for, 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 for everybody. Okay. I want to I wanna start off. Right, you've done some amazing work, but before we get into that, I want to talk about how you grew up in Oldham because you're, you're, even though you look very young, <laughs> Chach, yeah, you're not because you're quite experienced, you're mm. very wise and experienced. Let's just keep it at that, yeah. How, what, what was it like growing up in Oldham? Oh, growing up in Oldham, uh, uh we came in Oldham 1977, so at that time, there wasn't many Bangladeshi. So fa families, one or two families uh, were there. Um, it was different. Um, we, um, it was a close, I mean, people uh, who liked you, liked you a lot. People who disliked you, <laughs> disliked you. Mm. And you've had your- straight to your face. Yeah, 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 they're straight to your face. And I don't mind that. I'd rather have that straightforward than, you know, being nice to your face and, you know, now, the generation we are in now is the is the uh, is the latter, isn't it? So at that time it was what you saw, what you got. You know, we used to go into uh, local butchers. When you used to walk in, you can smell the butchery, and we used to go for eggs and things like like that. It was very small community. Driven. community yeah. Everybody knew everybody. Everybody yeah. knew everybody, um, and uh, especially with you know even the wider community, the shops that we used to visit, there was very, you know. I don't know, I don't want to sound too old here, but there weren't as many shops as, as we got now. And the butcher shop were butcher shops, and then we have your, you know, off-licenses and your cake shops. It, they were all different, you know. It's very rarely we used to go to Asda Tesco. Mm. Uh, I can't recall, uh, I think by the time I was in year seven, I recall going to Asda Tesco, something like like that. But before that, primary life, I can just remember going to local shops. Local shops. And, you know, the shopkeepers were very nice, very friendly. You know, we used to, I used to hand money over like this. They used to pick it out of your hand, take what was needed and give you back what, what Tempe, was it. Tempe went a long way. It, it went a long way. It went a long way. Uh, and, uh, you know, the fish, we, 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 we had a local fish and chip shop on, in the corner of our house, Chinese chippy. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it was good. Um, but we had our challenges. We oh, had our chal challenges. Initially, it was the language, obviously, that, and that was part and parcel, uh, you know, learning. Uh, <clears throat> other challenging was, you know, uh, blending in. Was was Oldham a Bengali area, or was 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 it mixed? Was it English? Uh, Predominantly English, predominantly English, predominantly with, English. With some families who are Bengalis, handful of Bengalis, handful of Bengalis, well. few Indians, not, not many Pakistanis. No, a couple of Indian families, maybe if one or one or two, uh, from what I can recall, uh, one or two Pakistani families. But it was, uh, was uh, it was it rough growing up, like racism and all that? A lot of racism. Uh, even even the football fans, we used, you know, Saturday we used to go home early because. Or come, you know, parents used to say, get home early, the football boys are going to be coming out. And, they, against yeah, football they, against. and they would come out and they would shout and they would scream at your face, knock on your door. And it, was, it was it was horrible at that time grow, uh, growing up. Uh, but at the same time, there were nice people as well. Your mm. Neighbours were very nice, elderly neighbours. 
you know, they would, you know, come Christmas time, they'd bring you, you know, tins of biscuits. I don't know if you can recall, tins of biscuits, all butter biscuits. And we used to do vice versa. We it, we, we we even used to decorate our houses like school used to do. So, mm. so at that time, we probably got involved a bit more. Can I ask you, did you get into fights? You must have. We, we had to protect ourselves. There was, to, the there, was some, there was some back in the days, not even in school. You 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 had a fight in school, and the next Saturday morning you were out, and you you see these guys on the corner of, say Mitchell Street or Ward Street, and think, damn, my mom sent me to the shop to get some chicken, man. How am I gonna go past this? Oh, the you, fear factor. Yeah, eh? you read you, you read what you need to read, and they go, be some, you know, whatever happens, happens. And you get involved, you know, you get beaten up, you get up, you you know, you give them some back. And then, and you know, and, and, and you know what, I think that made them notice, you know what, these guys are not going to take it lying down. Even though we were small in numbers, we stuck together. Yeah, I, I yeah. remember. I remember back in the days, yeah. I, I used to hear stories. But comparing now, now, comparing the youth that you were back then and, and, and your friend and your the whole, you know, the youth now, what is the difference? I think uh, the youth now, I've got it a lot easier, which they don't realize. I, and I'm talking about the Asian youth, hmm. and uh, I mean, um, and in general, I think with with the recent riots and so on and so forth happened. I think people uh, have have educated a bit more. You're referring to the riots, which one? The Oldham riots, the the NF riots, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. National Front yeah, riots. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. I think that was in two thousand and. <laughs> I can't remember. Two, three, something like, something like that. that. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I was a young man then. I was a young teenager. Too. Yeah. So, well, so after that, I think a lot of money has been invested in the town uh, and a lot of you know, infrastructure has been put in place where people are learning about and, and you know, mixing and learning. And alhamdulillah, you know. The thing uh, is, yeah, I think that NF, when they, when they came to Maldon, the the Bengalis, the Muslims, they came out as yeah, one and yeah. they, they were unified. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, it was a bad time for a lot of people because it was obviously violence and destruction, but it showed us who we are. Yeah. No matter what our differences were, we were together to fight one one enemy, yeah, so we, to speak. It, we, it, was, it was sticking up for your... For your, rights. Hometown, for, yeah, people, yeah. For, for your own rights, you know, for your own rights. Because, you know, we're here, we, we, you know, I came when I, you know, my dad was already here, my granddad was already here. Here, 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 here. So my uncle, my aunties were here. So, so they were already here. here. So you weren't so, exactly stealing jobs. No, no, right no, here. exactly. So we were already here, and and that was, I mean, I mean, you were opening takeaways, yeah, creating business, business creating yeah, jobs, jobs for people. Yeah, of course, and and I think over time, people now, I think people do appreciate a lot. But at the same time, I think uh, our our youth at the moment, uh, I feel they're a bit soft in that sense. Uh, oh, don't get yeah. into that man. They are a bit soft. <laughs> They're a bit soft. Uh, you know. Let me let me let me uh, one example. How I know this. Um, back in uh, boarding school, I I went back just I think a uh, couple of months back, and the my senior who who used to be my senior and now teachers are there. Now they they're the senior teachers now. Well, mm. middle sort of you know level. They were telling me how how different it is. Kids are complaining about everything. We had it bad. Like the the food wasn't that great. The facilities wasn't great. We only had two showers between 150 people. Nobody, well, we, we complained, but we got on with it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, Just, you got what great, it is, yeah, what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? We got on with it. We <coughs> loved our place. We loved where we lived. And we loved our building. We loved the cause. We, mm. we were attached to it. But now the kids there are complaining about so many different things. I mean, I mean if I can touch on this, my son goes to uh, Blackburn boarding mm. school. Uh, and that's one of the best ones. Um, yeah, it is. It is. Mufti, uh, one, of, yeah. one of the uh, top five. Yeah, English and maths, they're about 99%, eight to five. Pass rate, yeah, nine, nine to five pass rate. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. My son goes there, he comes home every two weeks. You know, we, you know, even though food and everything is included. Every two weeks? Yeah, yeah. For us, you were there four yeah. weeks. So, so now every two weeks they come, we'll pack the bags, you know, double bags, triple bags, oh, drinks, snacks, and even, even bottles of water. What is it? Yeah, we send bottles of water now because they don't want to drink the tap water. water. So did, I don't did, know what business that. Did you drink water? Yeah, yeah. So bottle. I, I drank water, Chachi, yeah? yeah. Like this, on yeah. the top here, yeah, for seven years, Chachi. Yeah. 
So, no, I think it's so you used. know, for two weeks, I'll probably give him about 14 bottles of water, a bottle, bottles? Bottle, bottle of the day. Wow. So I thought, you know what, let's make it easy. But still, like, you still have to push, push, push. But alhamdulillah, you know, it's, it's what it is. And, you know, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think the environment you're in teaches you how to, uh, how, and, and it teaches you and it develops you as well. Because I travel the world now, I go to different places and I see uh, refugees, kids about nine, 10 year old who've been refugees all their life. Mm. And when I see that, they don't, they know no difference. They get, get on with it. They don't, they don't start, you know, quarreling over a, a packet of crisps or a fruit or a, or a food, or a food bag. If you give it them, Alhamdulillah, if you don't, they smile at you. Mm. They're mm. used to it. So I think it's the environment that we're in and, 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 and spoon, spoon feeding. Is that, it very, yeah. We live in an environment now where it's very prosperous. Yeah. Right, we're safe. We're, we're in our own locality, uh, surrounded by people with with who are who are same as us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're safe. Uh, so the, the the quote that that I heard, I'm gonna mess you up. You know that. Um, <laughs> so basically, I'm I'm gonna paraphrase it. Yeah. Uh, basically, um, the education does not make you a man or mature. It's the hardship and struggles is what makes 100%. you makes you mature. And wise, mm. it's the experiences, the hardship, the struggles that you go through makes you into who you are. When I left school, uh, I come from a big family. Alhamdulillah, you know, you know, six brothers, one sister, yeah. dad. Dad, dad, daddy was really yeah, busy. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you know, the the you know, we've got family back home. We need to support. So you know, I left school doing my doing the GCSE exam. We were the first people to do GCSE exams. Mm. The second P people, first okay. one was twenty. Before you had the all levels in it. Yeah, yeah. So we were the yeah, and we were the second people to do the GCSE. I did my exams and I was working full time. Mm. Yeah, uh, because of the family, because of the uh, you know support mechanism. But alhamdulillah, you know, because I worked in an environment, restaurant takeaways. I think that totals skills, worldly skills, mm. you know, mingling with 30 year old people, working with them, telling, you know, you know, learning of them, the life skills that they've learned. You know, you, 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 you meet a 30 year old guy who's educated, you know, to, to the hill and back, but he does not have the people skill or the, the, the skills to communicate on social the street, skills. on the social skills, you know. So, so I think, you know what, now it's, now it's a bit too easy, you know. It's easy going. It's mm. all, you know, before was we want to go out and play football. We should come home and get leathered because we were out all day playing football. But now you can't push your kids out. <laughs> they're in the bedroom with their tablets and they're, you know, and, and you know, and, and, and that is affecting their well-being, mental health, the physical social well-being, skill, yeah. social skills. And, you know, your friends on social media, I mean, how many, how many, how many do you know? Yeah. Uh, it's It's been said by different people that the attention span in kids now has been so it's, it's so less because they're always want the next thing because they're always you know uh, <clears throat> they're always uh, exposed to fast pace and yeah. rapid response of TV and drama all these things uh -huh. they always want even when they watch TV and an advert comes they go oh my god you watch adverts now yeah. like oh well, man, we grew up on this yeah this was it. We didn't have a remote control. We were the remote control. Yeah. We had to go and switch <laughs> the channel. We were the remote. Massive TVs. Yeah. We were the remote. We had to go and swap it. You know, uh, channel. You know, no, that's not. So we were the remote. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you ever broken a TV and found out uh, that like you found a big magnet? We used to do all that. Yeah, we, 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 we used to we break know, it, we used get to the magnets behind the school. We used to break the, get the magnets out. And you know what? We had fun, man. You know, yeah. we weren't. You know, we did. We built, we, we, you know, roundabout, all them, uh, for this old roundabout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to have, you know, the subway, we used to build dens there, man. Yeah, yeah. And we used to, you know, you know, get some log, you know, wood and, you know, have fire. Building put, dens in, in, in bushes, yeah. You know, was a normal thing for Fire everybody. and, you know, big potatoes in them. And, oh, you know, yeah, we used yeah. to, you know what, well, the, these were things that we did and, you know, and we enjoyed and it, it and it connected people from different in areas as, as, as you know as, as as well as you know different uh, kind of uh, um, not just your your school friends but outside you know people that when you went to a different school that you met through doing these activities mm. uh, I, I remember growing up um not all jolly jolly because there was a lot of fights as well on our streets where there's a uh, gang members or 
you know, uh, say Westwood against Colas, Colas against, you know, yeah. uh, Bangla Farah, let's yeah, just say, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, there's a lot of fight to that as well. Yeah, and that's what happened. First, it was fighting to make your stance. Respect, respect, And sticking up for what's yours, your values. And now it's become fight within. <laughs> Sad we, to say. We don't know what you fight for anymore. Uh, exactly. It's fight within. It's over nothing. Parking space, car park space, or some, wow. you know, some hearsay. Hearsay. Yeah. You must know this more than me, actually. Um, do you remember about two months ago, or, or three months ago, I think, the the youth were beating up. Oh, the uh, boy that got beaten up by... Other boys, yeah, 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 yeah. Other boys. Regardless of girl, I think... I think you and I know whose daughter it was involved, but I don't know who the guys were, but it was revolving around the girl and he fights. And it was brutal. It was brutal. Absolutely it's brutal. Been... I, I... They, they nearly killed him. Yeah, and uh, from what I know, I mean, I think they almost got away with it as well. They, yeah. Considering what happened to him. Uh, uh, and, and I don't think... It was think... basically attempted murder. It is. And, you know, there's no... There, there is no kind of answer for why they sh they should have done that. You know, it's he didn't it, deserve it's, that. It's, okay, it's fine. He did some wrong. Yeah. Act. He didn't deserve Whatever that. Whatever he done wrong, you know, you do not, you know, you know, you do not do that sort of damage to a fair person. His 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 uh, integrity. You know, his his kind of uh, you know, they actually stripped him naked. Yeah, and you know, to to do what they did and take his. You know, um, his dignity, dignity, his integrity, away. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 sickening, it's sickening. Like nowadays, in all of them. Now, back in the days when we got in trouble, let's say, you and I got in trouble. Uh, our parents, uh, or the the person that uh, that we did something wrong to, their parents would come to our house, complain to our parents, our or, parents would beat the hell out of us. Or somebody middle would come once in a while, in a while, it, less sort of intermediary, yeah? community. Pissar, kind of, yeah. uh, you know, uh, like an elderly or a re re respected middle person would come and and would dissolve it straight away. Yeah. Hey, you've done that wrong. You've done that. Just shake and move, move on that. And, yeah. and that's it. And next thing you know, we were playing again on the park. Yeah. You know, the uh, St. Hilda School uh, car park now, which is mm. a school car park. We used to, you know, fight here every time. There was a process or a system yeah, in place. Yeah. yeah. But now, people, now, that's, now even the kids won't respect that. Respect uh, the the, they, the, the, who the respect you? for elders and honourable people in, in the community. They don't know. They they don't care. Anymore. I mean, what, I mean, I worked in school for what twenty two years. When I first walked in two thousand and one, uh, first day in school, I thought, wow, that, that just seemed like hit me. Two thousand and one, I walked in. I thought, where have I walked in? I couldn't see. I couldn't tell by looking at the children if they were Muslim, non-Muslim. Uh, faith and non-faith just by their appearance by their appearance and I at that time 2001 I probably left school well 12 years ago I left 89 so 12 years ago I left school but yeah. it was it moved on so much I was like shocked to see the way things were but alhamdulillah because I, I, I was out of the system so I couldn't I, I didn't know, I mean, I didn't go to college at that time or, mm. or uni, so I didn't see the, you know, the, the processes. But over time, you know, even then, now I look back at it and I've, I've, I've left school about two, three years ago now because of my charity work. Then now I'm thinking back, I think, well, 2001 was beautiful. Yeah. Compared to now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. First of all, like a shock, cultural <coughs> shock to me. So what am I doing here? And now I'm thinking, well, that 2001, that was a shock to me. Seems like the best thing that was there. You're, you're a parent, right? And, and you got grown children now, right? Your, your children yeah. are all grown up. How did you protect them from mixing in with the opposite gender during their high school, colleges and university now? How, how did you deal with it? You know what? We... There's nothing wrong with them mixing. I do not say, you know what, if, if, if my son or my daughter is in school and they have friends that they, you know, they work with, that's not an issue. It's when they act on act certain upon acts. certain acts that it, 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 it's not within the, the, the religious boundaries, then mm -hmm. I would have an issue. If my son or, or, would, would say to me, you know what, or, 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 I've got this book from uh, Joanne, Bismillah, because she's helping him in his education and, and it's just that, that's not an issue. 
But the youth nowadays are into all that now. No. The youth nowadays, uh, I mean, from... Uh, you know what, I think... It, I've heard a lot of stories uh, where the youth are doing the oh, girls as well, including are uh, uh, no longer virgins. Well, you know what? It's a very touchy subject. <sighs> but the thing is, those those boys and girls are somebody's sons and daughters who we know. We know their fathers and mothers. We know where they come from. We know where they live. You know what I mean? Doesn't that hit you a bit at least? It does because, like like I said, things have moved on now from what they were. Even, even primary schools now, they're having issues that maybe now... Uh, back in the days, 2000, 2001, them issues would be in secondary school, primary school. It has, it has, it's having an effect, the social media, the social, what they see and what they watch on YouTube and, 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 and whatnot, it, it's having an impact. Right. You've been in school, obviously. You've, you've been a teacher in school for a long, long time. Do you think, uh, do, do you agree with the whole uh, sex education in school? I think that should be, that. that is the choice of the parents. If, but do you do do you agree with it? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a positive thing to teach uh, young teenagers, thirteen, fourteen year olds, I, about sex education? I I don't I don't I personally. I'm, I mean, I I think that's the job of the parents to teach them, and that's the that's that and and parents and and religious leaders and faith schools they attend, they will teach them in their own way. Yeah, yeah. and and the way. We, you know, I, I, I was in classes where we were taught, we were, you know, going through these uh, giggling and gaggling and, and sometimes, you know what, it opens a kind of worms to them and, and, and they become, they become kind of, you know what, I, they're telling us not to do it, but let's have a go at it. You know what I mean, isn't so, it? So, 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 you so know what I mean? So, so, so when, when, when you when say you, to a kid, yeah, don't do that, yeah, what are they going to do? They, they're going to do that. Exactly. So, so, so I personally, you know what, I, I, and then you, you'll have some children who really don't want to be in the room. The parents probably didn't know about it and they just sat there and they're just waiting for the floor to open up and for them to sink in. Happens, and, and, yeah. and sometimes I used to say, you know what, I used to take them out and say, you know what, okay, you need to use the bathroom, do you? And and, 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 and you use that. Because sometimes you got to, you know what, you, you see and you know why they're doing it because of the, uh, um, of the respect, of the dignity or, or the values they've been taught at home. So I think we need to respect that. And and and, and I think... I think nowadays, I it, think more... It needs to be a choice yeah. rather than enforced. It has to be a choice. Mm. And the choice comes from the parents. Mm. And even the child, I mean, a child who has their, uh, their religious uh, upbringing from home, they will always put that first and foremost. It's nothing wrong to for my daughter to sit next to her, but that, that's not an issue. I wouldn't I won't call that an issue because you're living in this country, you're living in the system. But if my daughter felt uncomfortable... I would, I would, I would go back and say, "What, well, please?" But if she's okay with it, and 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 there's no issue with that, that's not an issue for me, and I don't mm. think it should be an issue for her. Because end of the day, these children are going to go into college, university, and they're going to travel the world. They're going to go shop. You know, they're going to do all sorts. Yeah. So it gives them that kind of uh, uh, a learning curve, and, and and it teaches them about themselves and 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 who 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 they are, who who mm. they are uh, yeah. uh, 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 mingling with. Cool. Um, Chas, I, I want to ask you um, a very uh, difficult question. Okay. Um, I hope it's not um, too difficult. And <laughs> I, I, I hope you're, you're, you're going to be honest about this, mm -hmm. um, depending on what your mood is. Um, <laughs> how could you tell me what was your most, most difficult and hardest times of your life and, and how you overcame them, really? Difficult time would have been... Where, where you, went, you, were, you were so down, so low, and you were failing and everything, you know, because you, you've, you've been exploring a lot of things, yeah. you've tried a lot of things, so many businesses, but you you must have felt where... I'm just, my lowest I, I, point... My lowest. lowest point was... Um, how long ago? Let me see, about seven, eight years ago. Uh, I, f I felt I was framed... Yeah, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I felt I was framed um, to get me out. Uh, and then eventually my choice was, if you live quietly, we won't make no more noise. 
you go, we go, and then it's, you know, it's all done and dusted. And I left. At that time, I thought, you know what, what do I, who do I turn to, what do I turn to? Alhamdulillah, you know, all praise to Allah. Um, I applied for a couple of jobs. Uh, and the job that took me on board was a Catholic school. SubhanAllah. And, you know, that, that is why faith is very important. F no faith is dangerous. Even if it's Christianity, Hinduism, Muslim, we all, everybody is on a, a track to get to a destination. So, for example, you want to go to London, someone's on a train, someone's on a, tra uh, a tram, and like it being me, I'll be, I'll be probably running <laughs> to London, yeah? But everybody is, is God-fearing, and the intention is to please God. So the institute that I was in with, I felt they had no uh, uh, ethos, religious, no ethos at all. And then, you know what, this... They, this school took me on board and gave me another opportunity and you know what and that made me feel you know what faith regardless of we, what faith people are you know are, are um, practicing some faith is better than having no faith I that's agree. me personally I agree uh, a lot of people might not like some that some faith is, is better than no better faith no because faith. it's what it's what drives you at least. Yeah, yeah. God fearing, God fearing. You have to have that, you know, beat that. You know what? You know what? I did this, man. Have I done this right, or have I shortchanged somebody? If you don't have that, that then I don't feel. I don't personally feel life is worth living. Can I ask you a question? I I, I usually ask this to some people who's been down. Um, at your most lowest point, your most lowest point, right? As a man. Is there anybody you call or talk to? Is, is there anybody that you would call? You know what? At my lowest point, my wife was my uh, rock. Alhamdulillah. I'll praise to God. And I would always, 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 you know, um, during my prayers, after my prayers, well, I would I would stand up and and do my prayers and, and I would open up to my creator, and um, I used to feel better. I used to wake up middle of the night, saying, you know what, this has been a, you know, I'm trying to do things right, and now I've I've got the brunt of it, and I don't feel anybody there to support me. But, you know, Allah, well, you know, you see everything, you watch everything, and I know I'm, I'm I've, you know, I'm, I'm in the right, but I feel this is my test. Uh, please, please, you know, Show me some light, so and, and I used to feel that every so every time I did that, I, I used to feel comfort. I used to feel, you know, uh, it's like seeing a can council like <laughs> in in, yeah, in yeah. a way. I didn't have to go to that level uh, because obviously in our community we don't, you know, we probably not. But I think this was my wife, my family, my parents, and you know, my lord. Alhamdulillah. Do you think you can share your feeling with with, with your friends? I could, but I, I, I didn't feel uh, it being. And my parents used to say this to me, you know what? Family is family, blood is blood. I said, oh yeah, right. But you know what? During your testing times, you realize what family is, and who you, you know your parents. Sometimes you think, oh, parents, man, they're just having a go at you, but it's not. Whatever they say. It will come back, and sooner or later you realize, wow, these points my mom used to say, my dad used to say, uh, my uncles used to say, wow, and and you you appreciate it, and that's why I when I, when I talk to kids, I I I, I always use that as you know what, now you're probably saying even to my children, I think you know what you probably think I'm having a go at you. You'll realize realize it now, then realize it when it's too late, because we've been there, done it, got the t-shirt. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes our parents couldn't express it in that way. Yeah. But at least we're in a way you now we can express our feelings. We're now understanding, understanding the, the, the meaning of meaning, what they were saying. Exactly, nowadays. exactly. And we've been through it. It's not just being uh it's empathizing as well as sympathizing. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's a different. Oh, we feel for what they went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, as as, as parents now, I I know now because I attended all, and I know feel I, I now feel what parents went through with me because I, I was not you know good good behaving kid. I was very mischievous and always into trouble. You know what I mean? And now I think what did my mother <laughs> through? You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm the we're blessed. I <laughs> know. But yeah, it, it was an eye opener that yeah. But you know what? That from then you know, and the help that I've asked for, the support I've had since then, it's been like an exponential growth. Alhamdulillah, you know, you you, you feel my you, you've seen my journey. Of course, and yes. and and that's what I'm a firm believer. If you're right, you will get tested. If you know, and you know, my faith, your faith, you know, we you know, if we don't get tested, and you know, people. Before us have been tested and trialed, yeah, uh, and we won't be the first and the last. So if you are patient with your with 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 what's coming your way, and if he's in the right path, you know you will get obstacles. It's breaking them barriers down. It's like everything we 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 say to children, we have to practice, isn't it? Mm. We're going to break these barriers down, and we're going to move on and 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 you know strive to to do better, and have that faith that you know what. I want to do this, and I'm going to do it for the community, for the better, bigger picture. And at the, at the same time, if I do that, automatically the name and fame will come. If I start doing things for name and fame, bang, you're finished. Yeah, you have to do it sincerely. Yeah, sincerity is important. Yeah, very important. Yeah, and and the lessons we we propagate first, we obviously gotta make sure that we act upon the lessons, or else those lessons will will we, we just go on deaf ears. Hundred mm, yeah. percent. And you know, if you don't practice what you preach, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's definitely. not going to happen at all. Uh, Chach, I, I want to ask you about your accomplishments. Yeah, what you've achieved. I've achieved, achieved nothing. No, 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 no. We've achieved. We've hold achieved. On, Chach, hold we've on, achieved a lot together, but uh, nothing. Nothing's come from me. Right. How did your running thing start? My running thing started. Uh, you believe it or not, I was uh, sixteen stones. Uh, That's heavy. Heavy. How uh, tall are you? I'm five six and a half. Five six and yeah. sixty stones. Yeah. Whoa, that's heavy. Yeah. So uh, I uh, then I had issues with my left eye, uh, and uh, after some tests, they asked me to go and have uh, uh, an operation, cataract. Uh, when I went for the operation, um, I'm sure people have heard this story so many times, but I have to say it because you're asking me. Uh, went into the room, waiting room. Everybody in that room were ninety odd at least. I thought, bro, dear, what am I doing here? You know, at that time I was 46. A good f five, three years, three, four years ago. Three, three and a half years ago. So I went back to my doctor for the operation and uh, it, was, it was a quick up-up operation. They fixed, they fixed it. Uh, and I said, you know what, why am I, the, you know, a 46-year-old man going in there having the same operation as these, you know, elderly, elderly, elderly folk, people. Yeah. yeah, elderly folk. So he said, you know what, I don't know because I hardly go to the doctors, very rarely. So they put a monitor on my, uh, you know, my blood pressure monitor. So keep that on twenty four hours and bring it, drop it off tomorrow. I thought you know a standard in it, so I kept it on. It was bloody a pain in the butt, but alhamdulillah we kept it on. Um, took it back and the nurse says, you know what, we're, you know, uh, we'll get in touch within a week and we'll we'll let you know what's happened. Within twenty minutes they rang me back, said doctor one needs to see you. Urgently, I said, "Whoa, I've just come back." You said a week, you know, urgently. I said, "Okay, I can't do it today. I'll see you tomorrow." So I went to the doctor. Said, "What? Blood pressure high, hypertension, hundred and sixty something or seventy something." Yeah, uh, he goes, "You know what? We, we're going to prescribe you with some med blood pressure med mm. medication." Blah blah blah. I said, "You know what? I know me what medication does to people, and I know once you get immune to it, used to it." There's no way way out, and then one thing to another, and you become dependent on the medication. Yeah. So I said, is there any way I can uh, uh, delay that? Give me six weeks or a month or two months. He goes, you know what? You probably have a chance if you uh, fix your diet, uh, start losing weight. That could be a starter point. So that's when I started uh, running on the street. Uh, I never used to be a runner. I used to be good at running, playing football. I used to be, you know, playing on the wings. Yeah, nobody would have thought you that, that, that you were a runner at no, that age. No, no, I, I wasn't. I'm 46. I'm no, I wasn't a good athlete in school. I was. There was nobody running at 46 no, at, 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 in our community, especially in our community. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, I got in touch with a local school, uh, Westwood High, uh, Brother Mumin uh, from uh, Asafar. Uh, I said, Mumin, you know what? I need to stay motivated and I need to uh, do some running and get my fitness back. And the gyms have closed because of lockdown. Why don't I run for the school and raise some money for them at the same time? So so every step I'm taking is, is good for me. Uh, it yeah, motivates you to do yeah, it yeah, do more and I know, to I, I know I'm helping uh, you know people okay. struggling during COVID so he, he spoke to the principal and I said Bismillah you know what let's raise 500 pound so I started running uh, and um, I think within a week I hit 500 pound and uh, my target was to run 50 kilometers I did that in a week so I said you know what this is, this is a nice man I'm loving it and then I started using people because of COVID, so we, we couldn't run together. So I used to put four people in four corners of the town. So I used to run from my house to point one yeah, with somebody from my house. And then he used to drop off at point one. Somebody else would join me from point one, two to point three. And he used to drop off and like, like a relay. Yeah. And every time I ran, I ran with four or five people. And eventually that campaign... Um, so you started building community around it. Yeah, that campaign raised... Uh, twelve thousand pound. Twelve thousand, and uh, I ran uh, two hundred kilometers. Two hundred. Two hundred kilometers, and uh, this, and and then you know what? At the, and that was during Ramadan, and at that time, uh, I don't know about any. I don't. I don't know about nationally, but definitely not in the northwest or in the UK. I don't know about globally, but in the UK, you never heard of uh, any Muslim. Uh, uh, active Muslim person or sports person, whatever it is, uh, apart from footballers when they're fasting, yeah, 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 they play yeah. football, but doing any sort of uh, Ramadan campaigns. Recreational sort of running. Running whilst fasting. So, but alhamdulillah now we, you have people, you know, uh, doing You've inspired a lot of people. Doing marathons, climbing mountains, yeah, yeah. Uh, all sorts. You've you know, inspired a lot. And not just people. our Bangladeshi community, there's a uh, wider community up and down the country. You know, when I see people doing seven marathons, you know, it, it, it must have some sort of a knock-on effect. Yeah, yeah of uh, course, of course it did. Because you, you sort of paved the way that it's possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and the benefits uh, of, of raising money for charity. At the same things. time, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know what, promoting mental health, physical well-being. Uh, we, I set up a 12-week uh, um, a course at uh, Marvin's Gym for women's, women, daughters, men's, sons. And, and and people working in restaurant late night, so we used to have three, four sessions in the day, during the day, twice, two, twice a week. Um, and uh, the the catch with them was they paid hundred pound, and they had to to take the hundred pound back. They had to finish eighty percent of the course. Oh, and you know what our people are like? That, they sign up and they don't want to finish it. But um, you know, most people finished it, even though they finished it, they didn't take the money back. They said, you know what? And give it to charity, right. so, so so that way we did. You know, then I did my half marathon, then I did my London marathon, I did my skydive, we did bikes of. Talk to you about the Ramadan one, which one? The Oldham to London. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that was phenomenal. Uh, that was like you first, were fasting. I was fasting from uh, dawn to dust, like normally we do. Hence the reason doing it in Ramadan. Why yeah, would yeah. I do a campaign in Ramadan and not fast? It defeats the. You know, I'm not trying to. Uh, uh, Play you want to bring you up here? You want to bring you up? I, I don't want to play with the mind with the people, yeah? Because, because, the, because if there are some I'm, individuals if, who are claiming that they that they were uh, they were climbing some some sort of mountain, let's just say, and they were, they were, they were doing it in Ramadan. But to me, it it doesn't make sense because if you were climbing a mountain of such um, height. You can't be fasting, man. It's it's it's, it's near enough impossible because you need the calories. <laughs> But I cannot answer that because uh, that is that for the, them individuals to. But what do you think? F- personally, me, I did my activity in Ramadan, uh, and I did it. The whole reason I was doing it in Ramadan was is is to fast and do it. How and, difficult was and it? And the reason I did it, and the times I did it was, I did it after Asr. So by the time as evening, it, so evening about time. half past four, five o'clock ish, six o'clock. So by the time I finish my fifteen kilometers average, I used to do a day. It'll be about half past seven, half an hour later. Just we, just just after before, yeah, sunset. Just before sunset, I would just before sunset. I would finish, yeah, and 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 then just before the sun sets, I've got half an hour to freshen up, uh, do my shower, come back downstairs, and the food is ready. 
Otherwise, for me, it, w- it would have been impossible to do. Hence, I did it. So, you know, alhamdulillah, you know. Uh, running, now, running during during Ramadan, while fasting. While fasting. I did it for 21 days on the trot, average 15 kilometers. And first time I did it, I planned it on my phone, Google. So I stopped for Oldham, 15 kilometers, it took me to Hyde. And from Hyde, so I came back home. The local ones that came back home with the car, but I, 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 I restarted what I finished the previous day. Mm. And I met so many amazing people on my journey. It's unbelievable. Uh, they've become family. You know, I had hotels booked uh, from Birmingham onwards. When I went to Northampton, this brother from Luton, because you know what, can you go and stay in my house for one night? My daughter and my kids' family are so buzzing over you they just want you and when I went to his you house he became very popular four million pound house at least four million pounds. four million a swimming pool in the back garden gym everything and he goes you know what you've got the third floor to yourself it's like a mansion man you know and, and you go through private private gates in, and there's about only 10 exclusive houses there uh, so I stayed one night if that time so when all his family came to his house, he's only 40 something. So, but you know what? Sincere guy. Works his socks off. Uh if that time his family comes, all his family, his mom and dad, everybody sits sat, sat on the table, kids sat on the floor, about 30, 40 people making the fast. And after my first evening with them, the little son comes up, says, Sasa, can you stay another day? So I said, okay. Inshallah, you know, so, you know but, uh, one day became another day and then the whole journey, the rest of the journey, I had to cancel my hotel. I stayed with the brother. Uh, amazing, uh, the gift they gave me, the um, gift. The support. The support. Uh, and I didn't have to worry about anything. The logistics, you know, they, they're proper runners, the Luton Lion. You probably heard of the Luton Lions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're a proper running club. They have 40, 50 people running every every week, twice a week. So they, the logistic instead instead of me going through the A six, they they would find a proper route that is health you know safety. Right. I just did it off the cuff, didn't it? But they thought sorted out the logistics, and uh, it was amazing. So I did it once, then I did it again the following year. So this year I'm going to give it a break on that. I'm going to do other things just to so just take the attention of myself. Did you get, did you get injured while while running? You know what? I don't even warm up. I don't even cool down. Allahu Allah, I don't know how it happens. Uh, I don't know how you do it, Judge. The people with me who run with me, they go, so we, we, you know, sometimes we have to drive from Oldham to Derby. Right. And by the time you get there, you're t- I'm tired getting there, never mind running there. Mm. So you're in the back, you know, and, and then you start your run and you're thinking about, it's took one and a half, two hours to get here. I'm not going to do 10 minutes warm up. Get out of the car, bang. You know what? I feel because I did it for a reason, for a purpose, not for me. It's to serve humanity. And, I think I was protected. Now, out of Ramadan, if I don't warm up, if I don't cool down, if I don't take a drink, I can't do it. Bizarre. It's crazy. Moving on to, uh, that reminds me because we, we, we talk about charities. I get a lot of questions. Yeah. I get a lot of questions. <laughs> so do I. So about, do I. About, about when when charities do I get claim... paid? Do I get paid? <laughs> I want questions. I want questions. Do I get paid? I said yes. I have a family to feed. Let me finish the question. I have a mortgage. Um, when charities claim to be a hundred percent donation policy, how true is that? You know what? I'm going to hit this with one little uh, point, okay? And I'll leave that to everybody. Our views. Now, viewers there, okay? Now, I want to send fifty pound to Pakistan or Bangladesh. Now that fifty pound to go to Pakistan and Bangladesh, will all of it go? No, we got to obviously spend uh, stamps. And well, well, then you fees. you you make head and tail out of the the question you put to me. But I'm not claiming it to be a hundred percent donation, am I? Listen, there are people out the, there. The the charities who claim that a hundred percent of your donation mm. will be will be only spent for donation. Now, I'm obviously charities who say that have only costs, maintenance costs, they, 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 to they, pay. they probably have things. How, in, how can they claim they that? They probably have things in place like gift aid. They probably have donors who will donate to the running cost. They will have a general fund spot where you support. And then, you know, 
with regards to zakat, obviously we know that there's that, that so many people who can benefit, and one of them are uh, the people who collect zakat and, and distribute. Mm. So, so people use that as well. So, you know, but even though you can, you you say earlier that that even though in zakat there's there's a lot of uh, zakat is something that that is as Muslims believe that we have to give. 2.5% of our earnings. Um, if everybody gave it, there, yeah. there would be no poor people around. Yeah. And if they would have did, did, did it in a... That's the claim that in, we in a, yeah, Muslims make, in, yeah. In, in, a, in, a, in, in, in an organised way, there would be no people yeah. needing the handouts. Yeah. But I can't answer for everybody else. What, what, the what, about, that, what about the charity that you work that for? I work for. Without, we, without we, mentioning names? We have... A policy in place where you the the cut goes hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Your uh, normal donations, uh, we, it, it depends where we you know we work in eight countries, yeah. So it depends. It it, it can be between five to eight percent, and it, it's Islamically you're allowed up to twelve. So, but you know that. Individual for individual, hence the reason I am with this charity, um, and and I've been with them, and I don't think I will go and work with anybody else because I like the ethos, I like the honesty, I like the transparency, and uh, I feel you know what. At one time I was like, oh yeah, yeah, we have to be hundred percent. But, but they are though, isn't it? But, but there are some charities. Even there. the charity I work for was hundred yeah. percent at one time, but they couldn't manage it. But it was very difficult. It's difficult, uh, uh, and you know very well, you know. But then again, yeah, it is you, difficult. You know, it's true. It's difficult, and you know you gotta pay people. You know, okay, you don't pay, and, and you don't pay. Because I left teaching. I I used to be on fifty thousand pound a year, give and take with my tuition centre, my private tuition. But society won't pay me that much. Mm. Not, not even fifty percent, give and take. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. You know, after what I've done now, I'm you know I've had you know. People, uh, you know, trying to say, you know what, would you come and join us? We'll pay up to 50, 60K. Yeah, but the, this charity that I work for, they don't. It, it's not as high as that. But what I'm saying is we do have overhead. We do have a life. We do have family. We have children. You know, we got bills to pay. We got bills to pay. So, yeah. you know, so why should we be shortchanged? And if if you was working in a business, if if, if you had a business and your uh fundraiser or your your, your uh, person that works for, for you he brings in uh, half a million pound a year why wouldn't you pay him 50,000 pound makes sense why wouldn't you makes sense but you know what I mean but so people aren't there aren't there companies out there who claim to be charities right With, well, within the Asian community let's let, let just say those are those Asian charities who claim to be 100% Right, even even if they don't claim, in your experience, have you have you seen charities that do some shady stuff, or have you heard? What I've only heard rumors. Obviously, we hear here hearsay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and personally, you know what, working in the charity se sector is not easy. You're playing with fire. What do you mean? In the sense of, you know what, you work in a school, government pays you, alhamdulillah, you know, it's okay. You can shortchange that. But when you work in the charity se se I'm sector. I'm not condoning that, yeah? yeah? Just just listening. But, but, but what I'm saying is, you know, when, you know, when you work in the charity sector, you're not, it's not work. It's not, if it was work, you can't work in the charity sector. So I do empathize with the charity. You can't sector. treat it as a job. It's not you? a job. It's, it's not a nine to five job. It's, it's 24 hours around the clock. People go through all sorts. You may have your set hours. Yeah, you don't have your, you don't, there's no set hours. They, they work triple the hours. Uh, and I don't think knowingly anybody that would have to shortchange anybody. Wallahi, mm. he can't, he can't because <clears throat> even, you know, working for an organization, normal organization, you know, if you feel that you're shortchanging somebody, you feel, oh, man, I shouldn't have done, 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 you know, done that. Maybe I need to be honest and say, you know what, I didn't do them hours and things like that. But it's, 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 it's I don't know, it's hard to describe it. Some, I have a lot of respect for Some charities. days you wake up thinking, oh, what, yesterday, did I do enough work? I'm getting paid, and it's not any old job. I'm, 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 I've been selected to do this job, and you know, out of so many people, I'm doing this charity work where it, it could have been anybody else. And if I'm shortchanging anybody, I'm shortchanging the people 
that's would benefit. And if I'm not doing my just or the, with, with that, how can I sleep at night? So I, I think I think there's more yeah. responsibility and there's more kind of a, 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 what's it called? You know, you, you think ten times before you do some things, and and it's a hard. If you if hard you have grasp. the fear of God and, and and the fear of Allah, okay. Before I get into that, you because I used to question the charity before because. People are people, people have their own genders and, you know, they're telling me one thing and they're doing one thing, right? And uh, there, there are only a very few churches out there who I actually trust, right? But when I see individuals like yourself, it, it, if you tell me some stories about when you used to go and hand out food and what you saw. What do I, where do I start? Um, Because that, that give, is what convinced me give, that you're sincere. Giving donation is the easiest job in the world. Somebody comes to you, it's an opportunity. And sometimes we don't feel that. We think, oh, he's back again, man. But you know what? The saying in it, charity does not decrease your wealth. And if you believe in that, sincerely believe in that, you will give every time somebody comes to you, even if it means one pence, five pence, whatever it is, give. Never turn people away. Because that time might come when somebody won't come to you. And I've been out there, yeah. First time I went to what, the place called Brundi. And thought, what's, it, what's it like actually being there? Oh, it's... You cannot feel it until you go. I'm telling you. No matter how many times I've seen it on Facebook, I've seen Rizwan Hussein on Channel S and One TV and Islam Channel, you know, uh, you know, all the big kind of celebrity fundraisers that have been there. And to, wow, man. The big they, boy, yeah, the uh, big boys. They, they got the life, man, luxury, man, traveling. As soon as you go, the journey, is. it looks easy, it's not. Then your time... Time scale, then you, you know you go there and you, it's constant. You get up seven o'clock. It's military kind of stuff. You go seven o'clock. You travel two and a two hours, three and a half hours. You got people waiting for you. These people are going. You're going to give food packs to. They'll probably be there. To, you know, they've been lining up for, probably from Fajr, even though you told them come at twelve o'clock. And you deliver with with you know when you give me your donation, you don't just say yeah take it. You give it nicely. So we take that nicely and give it them nicely. Yeah. So and and we tell them, you know what? This isn't this isn't me. I'm here on behalf of A B C D, who's given you that. And I try every time I go, I try and get some videos. Saying, you know what? People who donated, this is for you. You know, we're doing nothing. And when this elderly, uh, oppressed woman, you know, in her nineties, puts your, her hand on your head, and makes dua, money can't buy. Can't money buy. can't buy. And and and. And and your passion, your appetite becomes more and more. I mean, last three months I've been out of my, of the country for at, at least one week, two weeks. I'm going again in, in 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 January, yeah. But it's difficult for the family to you know maintain that and accept that. So it's not just me; it's the family. It's a big, big sacrifice, especially coming through a background where I I was nine to five. And I've had obstacles. In even I told you about one hardship that I had there. Another hardship I had, serious hardship, was when I joined the charity sector. Before I joined, I was going to quit. Why? Um, I did this challenge, skydive challenge. And me, me being new, uh, it's the 100% donation that you, 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 you talked about. Um, so the charity said, you know what? If, we, if somebody raises 1,500 pounds, we have a businessman who will pay for the jump. So sky jump. 250 pound. So get people to register, give them a target to raise. If they raise 1500 pound, Joe Bloggs from uh, Essex or from Spec Savers, he wants the reward. He's greedy. He'll pay for you. He, 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 his jump. So in, in essence, he'll get the same reward as you jumping and everything. That you, it makes sense. But because I was new, I couldn't word it right. Mm. So the guy who was in my group, uh, WhatsApp group, this jumper, he, he deleted him himself out of the group and he passed the information on. It's like hearsay. Afrizmi are saying, you know, if you raise 1500 pound, he'll give me 300 pound back. Is it coming from my donation? I think it's coming from my donation. So this guy who spoke to, he blasted it on Facebook. Then my line manager rings me up. Because uh, Afrizmi, is that guy talking about you? I said, nah, can't be. I've just said, you know what, we're doing a jump. And if you raise 1500, I'll give you 300 pounds back. But I told them it's not going to be from the donation. It's going to be from a, a donor who wants to 
right. invest, you know. So yeah. your donation will go, but... So donation separate, separate. there's somebody else who's willing to fund, willing the to fund, fund your jump. Okay. Which, which makes sense. Yeah. But me being new, come on, I've not I've been in the sector for that long. I, I couldn't word it. Maybe I couldn't word it properly. But I thought it was the duty of that person who put it on social media I would would have the decency to speak to me. To so, clarify, yeah. yeah. But he, did, he, he didn't. He went with here. Well, you know, we, we, we're all human. We make, make mistakes. And I thought... Oh, I can't be doing this. I, th- I, I drank my line. I said, no, what? forget it, man. Forget the charity jump and all that. Stick to your charity. I'm leaving. I can't do this. Before I even started, I've got people on my back. Yeah, Ooh. And that's just one incident. I've had people running with me, uh, people, uh, you know, joining my runs and, you know, social media, Facebook with me, you know, people blocking you. For some re for some reason, so you 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 get that, and it's not on you know people probably see things on Facebook and wow man this guy's living the life and but you know what it's a lot of sacrifices a lot of stress, and if it was for money, I wouldn't be doing it, and the only reason I'm doing it is the money for the hereafter. It's it's easy to point fingers. Here and there, you know what I mean. Well, you need to be you need, you need to be practically doing it, physically going out and seeing. And once you're out there, and now I've gone to a stage now. Wallahi, if people put ten things about me on Facebook, it, 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 it's water off a duck's back now. Bother you. Because I know the bigger picture. Bigger picture is when I go and see Mariam out there. When I go and see Musa out there and Abdurrahman out there in Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, and I look at them, I think, sod you, mate. This is important. Hopefully these duas will one day be a means for us, you and me, and everybody that supports my campaigns to enter Jannah, inshallah. Inshallah. Chach, uh, could you tell me about uh, your next, your your upcoming projects? Up and coming. <coughs> Obviously, uh, in uh, January, I'll be doing the uh, Maka Challenge, where we will be climbing the Jabal al-Nur and Jabal al-Hur in one day. Uh, Martin of Nur. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, one, the, the other mountain, the yeah. most mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. we're climbing them. Uh, and, 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 well, I what double yeah. means. Yeah, yeah. So it's mountain. Yeah. So we will we'll be climbing them, and you know, there's about twenty five of us going. Twenty five. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we we're raising funds to build a uh, medical center in Bangladesh. Um, now, recently, I've got my daughter involved. So sometimes you know what charity needs to be go, begin, and you know we need to embed charity into the into children at an early age, so they 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 understand what's going on. And recently, I've been working with schools. Uh, we did a project with Saint Thomas School. One at uh, the highest money they raised was four hundred pound, but the campaign that we did, we ran charity run. They brought a pound in. And we thought we'd raise about three four hundred pound. We raised four thousand pound for the Pakistan floods, most ever money. They've raised. I don't. I think the most any school have raised, you know, in Oldham, for a, a little uh, kind of uh, short run that we did. So hopefully I'm going to use that, and um, and uh, get into more schools, and not just work with uh, projects abroad. We, you know, Shatin is just at home as well. You know, homeless here. People are in difficult times here. You know, with the bills and crisis and we are in hard the, times. Yeah, the, the energy bills and th- so what I'm so. So I've got two challenges coming very soon. One will be my daughter. I'm going to let my daughter take more ownership. I will be supporting her. I think people are fed up with seeing my face every so often. <laughs> but I'll be there in the background. Not really. We, we will be, I'll be there in the background. So, so I've got two challenges. One for the Muslim community, which will be uh, to memorize uh, the glorious names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 99 names. Uh, and uh, the reward of that, as a Muslim, is you know if you if you, if if you memorize them and their names, uh, you the 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 fire of hell becomes haram haram for, forbidden uh, forbidden. So so that's a massive thing. Yeah. And, and me, almost 40, 50 year old man, I've not memorized it. Where well, my daughter's done it in eight days. So we're gonna do a national national international campaign, where we want people to register. It only takes you to memorize three names a day. Three names a day. And if they memorize three, uh, three names? A day. Uh, automatically, as soon as they register, they will enter a, a, a draw for uh, two tickets for themselves and one family member for uh, to visit the House of Allah. 
So that that's one challenge. Uh, and then I want to set one for generally for everybody to get involved because I don't want that to become just a you know a Muslim thing. It has to be a humanitarian thing. So mainstream, yeah, everybody. Mainstream, everybody. That will be, obviously people know I do the 313 run. I did twice. This year I'm going to give that a break. So I'm going to want to do something locally. So I'm going to get uh, my daughter to every day was in, in Ramadan to uh, walk run or jog 3.13 kilometers which is like two miles yeah. so that could be kids going to school and back <clears throat> instead of going by car parents can take them and come back and that will be we've not sorted the logistics out but personally i want to uh, raise funds for families struggling in the uk especially in the northwest especially in my hometown first and for, uh, foremost to support families who are struggling during the holidays with you know like you know dinner or pack lunches or you know certain kind of struggle because you know during the break two weeks school holidays six week holidays families are struggling and will struggle a bit more so we want to support these families uh, and and children like my daughter who is fortunate enough to say you know alhamdulillah you know praise to god that we've got food on the table and we 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 we're, we're fortunate you know, coming from Bangladesh, that we're in a fortunate position where we have people born here, uh, raised here, ancestors from here who are struggling. Yeah, it's a massive thing, and and we need to, you know, reach out to these people. And you know, and the Quran is so beautiful. It says, if you save one uh, mankind, it's like you're saving humanity. Yeah. So the Quran doesn't say save a Muslim. The Quran says save a mankind, human being, and it, regardless of what faith. So that's what I want to do. I don't know how successful it will be, uh, but I, I hope you the I, best. I, 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 you I, the best. I need the support of people. You know, instead of driving to school with your kids, set off it ten minutes early, one mile walk, one mile back. You've done it. She's done it. He's done it. And you know, you, are you raising money yeah. for to help? You know, and hopefully, um, you you can finally. <coughs> sorry, and hopefully, you could um, once and for all uh, get. Answer the questions that, that you've been receiving. That why don't you help your own locality? Exactly. Right? I mean, I've got a lot of you know the 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 school uh, project that we did was on the Oldham Chronicle, and so many you know sadly, but they're still you know not just you know we white communities we have the Bengali communities, Pakistani communities, nationalism, tribalism, whatever you want to call it. People saying, oh, how come it's all going to Pakistan and how come it's all going to Yemen? What about the Christians? You know, negative, but people could have said that in a nice way. You know, thank you, Mr. Mia, what you did with these guys. I think, you what know, about what, the people here? what about doing something for he, here? I've got an idea. Would you please get in touch? That is a nicer way of doing it. Yeah. You can make a proposal. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I've heard so many, you know, negative comments, uh, you know, in the local press, but that doesn't bother me, like I said, anymore. But that gives me ammunition to, you know what, that negative, I want to turn into positive. And hopefully this Ramadan, uh, we want to show that, you know, the month of Ramadan is the month of Quran, which teaches us a month of giving as well. Yeah, that's what it's about, yeah. Yeah, and it's, um, it's, not, it's not just about charity. It's about going back to uh, our Lord and to, to, to remind ourselves that we need to be reminded of, it's not just about the worldly aspects. We, we have to be improving our spiritual aspects as well. It's, it's, it's important. And the, the reason why, I ask you this is, uh, and I would ask you, is that whatever you went through, the hardships, the struggles, the the depression, right? Without Islam, without religion, without faith, without faith, how how hard would it have been? Oh, I don't think I could have done what I've done without, you know, turning to my Lord, without having somebody to talk to. Okay, you have your family, you have your wife, you have your parents, you have your brothers, sisters. But that connection, one-to-one, heart-to-heart, is, he can't, he, he, without that, it wouldn't have been possible. Wallahi, you know, Allah is my witness. Yes, and everything that we've done, I still firmly believe nothing is possible without the will of Allah, will of God. And uh, I do not think I could have done one step never mind run to London one step since if he wasn't for the reason the cause and for for the pleasure of you know you know making my lord happy first and foremost yeah. and after that 
if the limelight comes along, if you get people asking for selfies and you get British Empire medal, Bismillah, you know, it's good. It's just one of the perks. It's, it's just, yeah, yeah, it's perks. good. It's good and, you know, you take it, but it shouldn't be the other way around. We shouldn't be, you, do, we you shouldn't shouldn't be, be doing things success. to get uh, worldly gains and medals and rewards and uh, uh, certificates and honours. Yeah. yeah. As they say, but strive for excellence. You, you, do, you won't get it. You, you do sincerely. Your money will f- come along. Your, your name and fame, your reputation will build automatically. Yeah. So I, I earn less money now than before. Was was working in school and doing my private tuition. I'm earning, like I said, 40 percent less at least to what I was. Mm. But I have more money in my bank account now than I did when I was earning a lot more money. Mm. And that goes to show charity. This job is charitable work, and it's not 36 hours. I probably do 36 hours in in uh, in two days, three days. Yeah, but. Charity does not decrease your wealth. And you have to believe that mm. firmly. I went to a lecture last week and the guy goes, we don't believe in it because we don't see it. Had we seen it, that we gave you charity and the money's coming back in a different way, shape or form, we'd, everybody would be crazy to give <laughs> because we don't see it physically. Mm. We think we're not getting it. So like I said before, what is that? If anybody comes, not me, doesn't matter. You you need to keep stay sincere. You're doing it for the pleasure of Allah. Whatever he does, obviously, if you see somebody's got bad reputation, you don't give it here. You know, obviously, you know he's gonna take it and you not know, do drugs you with do it. Your yeah. due diligence. Of course, you do it if they if they're yeah. gonna be yeah. Uh, if you're reputable, if it's charitably yeah. registered, blah blah blah. Uh, you know, and 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 people are you know you know yeah. yeah. Do your homework. Do your homework and do it sincerely. Don't turn anybody away, even if he's giving a pound. Give it. Yeah, I've learned that. Wallahi, if somebody comes to me now, first thing I do, you know what? Even if I can't, I'll just you know, anonymously. I'll probably put fifty pence in. It's something. Well, yeah, something, yeah, better than nothing. So that's why when I send messages to pe- people on the broadcast, you know what? If it bothers you, tell me. I'll I'll take you off the list because I don't want to bombard you too much. But then again, I don't want to not give you the opportunity. Yeah, it's an opportunity. Mm. Chach, uh, last thing I want to ask you is, uh, is what advice would you give to yourself, to your 15, 18 year old self? To your 18 year old self, what advice would you give to yourself right now? You know what, when we become, I, I, I believe I'm quite fortunate at my age, I've got an opportunity to work for a charity. Charities look for 25 year old, 30 year old, single, you know, energy, good looking kids, passionate, want to travel the world, they put him on camera, he looks Look the business, the yeah, he looks the business, you know, he's not got a stutter, blah, blah, you know, whatever. So I feel I'm fortunate, I'm the opposite of all that, but Alhamdulillah, I've been fortunate to do what I'm doing. It's, it's good that. Uh, you know what, we, we become God-fearing. Sometimes people become old and they have no other choice. They have to go to the mosque, they have to go to church because that's the only thing left for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah? But to practice at an early age is something money can't buy. Yeah. So my advice would be, be God-fearing. Uh, do what you need to make the sacrifices now. And these sacrifices now... You know, abstaining from haram, abstaining from things that are not, you know, uh, 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 things that you're not supposed to be doing. Yeah. These things, the more sacrifice you make, sacrifice, you know what, See, I'm go, going on a bit now. Sacrifice, we think, you know what, we're giving a pound, we've sacrificed. Sacrifice, when you make sacrifice, but you have to feel the pinch. If you don't feel it, it's not sacrifice. Now, I want to go to a, a shisha bar three times a week, yeah? But or, or whatever, I don't know if that's a good example or not. But I want to go to a nightclub, you know, what, 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 whatever it is, I want to go so some of that. I want to drive a nice car, okay? Yeah, but no, car's okay, car's okay. Car's okay. So, something that you know, what a young 18 year old, you know, would do that maybe I wouldn't do, yeah. Now, I want to do that, but if I can abstain from it now, can you imagine the rewards? Save yeah. up. Yeah, so so it's like it's a sacrifice you make now, a bigger once you once you hit 50, 60, whatever it is, you know what? 
Only thing got left is now, you know, looking forward to uh, being granddads and play, <laughs> playing five times the mosque, it, it, go, go, going to the mosque. And, and you're not going to, you know, you're not going to walk down the street and people are going to wolf with who's like you. It's not going to happen anymore, mate. But when they when it happens and you're walking down on these people wolf who's still at you and, you know, think you're the guy and you, you uh, stop yourself, not because you're not interested, you stop yourself because of your faith and your sacrifice, you know what, this is only a little pleasure I'll get out of this, but the bigger pleasure is turning away from me until it's halal for, for, for me. That's the sacrifice. Mm. Yeah? You know, giving, you know, Abu Bakr, our, uh, you know, one of the Khalifas, when he gave 100% of what he had, that sacrifice. Yeah. Giving 50% of what he had, is, that sacrifice. I've got 100 grand, I'm giving 10, 5 pound, big deal, mate. You have to feel it. And it, just not with financially. No pain, it, no gain, yeah, eh? Even, you know, sacrificing, you know, with little, you know, not little, but, you know, that worldly things, you know, yeah. abstaining from these text messages that you get. Oh, are you free? You can't make changes in the world without making sacrifices. Sacrifice yourself. And and you gotta make you gotta make these sacrifices at an early, younger age. And these will be like th things that you've never imagined of the re the, the reward would be unimaginable. Yeah, that, you know, it. the only regret was you know what what I'm doing now, had I been doing that from uh, uh you know uh the age of eighteen. Now there's there's a lot of opportunities now. So many charities people can get involved with, volunteer, do this. You know, you have options. Go go on deployment, go and see the world. Before we didn't have that, so we're not to blame. But now you've got it here. You, the youth have got everything now. They've got they uh, they can Google uh, my charity and say, well, okay, they're looking for volunteers. They're going to event here, event there. Why don't you do these kind of things and make the sacrifice and go in and having a shisha or whatever it is. Well, you probably go four times a week, go one time a week, and the three times a week, do your other stuff. That is sacrifice. So that's mm. that's my advice to people. You know what? Do it when you're young, man. And well, you know young. what? Allah will, you know what? Instead of you looking for somebody to, you know, match up maybe in old and whatever, you probably meet somebody in, 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 in America, Canada, Burundi, Lebanon, you know, beautiful people around the world. They you, know, you, know, you know, you don't yeah. have to list, you know, you know, you know, you can, as long as it's within your remit and within your faith, who says you, you got to, you know, marry into a Bangladeshi family, marry into something, you know, more beautiful if you want. <laughs> I'm not saying Bangladeshi are not beautiful. Uh, Chach, uh, I was going to end it there. <laughs> but I want to ask you <laughs> another about, question. <laughs> one more question about your stuttering. I had the same issue. When I was a kid, speaking for me was very, very difficult. What you see now is actually very tamed. <laughs> Mine's tamed as well. Yeah. I'm very, how, how was it like when you were a kid? When I was a kid, it was worse. Uh, it's still when I get angry, I, I can't speak. I'd rather punch somebody and make my uh, voice heard. A man of action rather yeah, than words. Yeah, but I'll get, I, you know, when I get excited, I'm, you know, my stutter starts kicking in a bit more. But yeah. when I'm calm, collective, nobody will notice. Mine comes in when I'm, when I'm nervous. Nervous, yeah. yeah. A bit nervous, but when I get excited. When yeah. I get like, you know, when I, you probably notice when I'm like talking about my journey. Or when you get passionate, when you passionate, get passionate, passionate excited, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you want to just say things. Say things. Your brain is yeah, working faster yeah, yeah, than yeah, yeah, your, yeah, your yeah, mouth is. Yeah, yeah, But, you know, it's one of them things, and, uh, you know, we're not all perfect. Of course not, yeah. And, uh, and it's not stopping, you know, if I, when I, when I went into a couple of schools the last two weeks, I've been going to a few, a few schools, I said, you know what, f for me, from the background that I've come from, uh, and for what I've done so far on my journey, if I can do this, anybody can do this. All you need to do is stay focused and put your mind to it and be sincere. I, I always renew my intention. Everything, you know, sometimes you, you, you know, you're human, you think, you know what, people are messaging you, bigging you off, with my, you're smashing it. You know, it that certain will start, you know, was 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 uh, you know it's it, and, and you, you need to renew your intention. I've not done nothing. I've not done nothing. It's easy to fall into, into the trap. temptations, and I have people around me that will bring me up. So I've by myself. I've done very good. But you know what? Just renew your intention again. Maybe you know to feed your ego, isn't it? It's, it's, it's dangerous. It's it's hard, hard, that's yeah. why I say working in a charity is playing with fire. Because it's not just it's not any old work. It humbles you. It humbles you. It humbles you. And you've got to come back. You know what? 
I've done nothing. You know, you, I've raised between you and me, or hopefully after Ramadan, I'll I'll, I'll hit one million pound. Mashallah. Well, and I, I, I don't want that to be exc- you know go, go going out yet, but that's going to be you know a big campaign I'm going to do at the end. One million pound for a guy who's not done charity work. Yeah, and it's been, you know, from all them age of 50 year old man doing it, running up and down, jumping off planes. If this guy can do this, man, what are you 18 year old and 20 year old, 25 year old doing and thinking about? Definitely. Yeah, and, definitely. And, and that all has to come from above. We cannot do nothing. Nothing at all. Actually, you've, even, you've definitely inspired a generation of people to be more active, to get out there, to think about something that's beyond yourself. Of course. And how, how, who would have thought? Who would have thought uh, that? But, I think, you know what, we've always been charitable. As Muftim, yeah. We realise or not, our parents got together, they did Madina Masjid, you know, yeah. collecting donations. Indirectly, they've been doing charity work. Despite having very late themselves. Yeah, but they did charity they work. Giving... They, they were charitable. Yeah. They, they bought the church and that became a masjid and then they had to run it and they used to go around and collect donations. So that's what we've been fed. We 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 seen it, but we didn't realise it. Now we can... So you know what? Whoa! Yeah. You know what? This is in my, this is in my system. I'm not the first child to work in my fa- fa- uh, family. My parents have done it. My uncles have done it. You know what I mean? Helping yeah. people in our villages. That's charity work, isn't it? Mm. So we have had that, but we've not taken a step back to realize, whoa, this is what it is, and we need to carry on. Yeah. We need to carry on, and, and at one stage we want to be able to give enough charity out. That the people who give we give to become givers of zakat. Instead of putting food to mouth every so often, you gotta give projects where livelihood and give them a big amount. Yeah. And say, you know what? That's the you you take this rickshaw or baby taxi or tuk tuk. This is yours, and now I want you to give pay zakat next year. Yeah, we don't say that you can't enjoy your money. Right? You enjoy it. You enjoy it. But you gotta. It has to be within your, you know, beliefs and your, you know, your, 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 your kind of foundation of life. Mm. Church, it's been an inspiration and a pleasure talking to you, Church. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair for the I, invite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I appreciate uh, what you're doing uh, uh, and hopefully this will uh, engage and uh, uh, will uh, motivate people to work together uh, and uh, you know, build bridges, break barriers, and and be open to speak about things. You know, speaking helps. Yeah. Like speaking to you sometimes. You know, I, I you know about my hardship. I took certain things out of my chest that maybe I couldn't have spoken to, you know, to you on a general conversation. True. Yeah. So because I'm here and you know and I'm, you know amazing. So keep up the good work uh, and any support that you need. You know, I'm only a phone call away. Uh, Thanks, and uh, make dua that you know <clears throat> we stay sincere. And uh, I'll accept one little thing that we do, and that may that may be a means of entering uh, the ent- in eternal life. And uh, I mean, and uh, you know, and I pray for you, your ch- your church. That I pray that Allah grants you and your family success in this world and in the hereafter. Amen. Amen. Yeah, guys, um, if you found this video, this podcast valuable, and you learned something, or you thought. You, something you, you can relate to then please um, write a comment of your, of your thoughts <clears throat> share your comments share your struggles share, share what you're going through uh, get in contact I want to know who you are what you what you do and um, please like and subscribe and please if you want to support me support the podcast or support and anyhow I am welcome for all ideas and suggestions, guys. So thank you for listening and have a good day, guys. Assalamualaikum.